Hello, welcome to this section of Calculus, Extra Practice with Integration. And in this section we're going to talk about calculating volume using integrals, but specifically using what we call the DISC method uh, there. So you'll find out in calculus that uh, first you learn the general idea of calculating volume with integrals, which we've done in the last section. And then you'll learn about a few specific techniques. Uh, one of them is called the DISC method, which is what we're learning today. And then later on we'll have what we call the washer method. And then finally we'll have what we call the shell method. None of them are difficult, but they all require you to understand what's going on. I mean, if I just tell you, here's the DISC method, here, use this equation or here's the washer method, or here's the shell method, here use these different equations, then it's going to all seem jumbled up and crazy sounding because you're not going to really understand where it comes from. So let's take a few minutes and talk about what the washer method is, uh, and, and then really you'll understand exactly how it works. So the washer method is, is done because basically every one of these problems that deal with the washer method uh, is basically a function that's revolved around the x-axis. So if you can just kind of visualize, and I'll draw one on the board in a second, but if you can visualize an xy coordinate system right in front of you there, and if you can visualize some function, any function, just hovering over the x-axis, some squiggly function, and then if you envision that you take that function and you revolve it around the x-axis, which means literally revolve it in a circle around the x-axis, then you will have created a three-dimensional shape that will be symmetrical around the x-axis, right? And no matter where you slice it, you're always going to see a circle. Right? Always. Because you've taken the function, no matter how squiggly it is, and you've revolved it. So to draw a picture of that, let me just quickly show you what I'm talking about because the washer method is basically going to be used to calculate volumes of shapes like this. So if this is an XY uh, plane uh, or coordinate system, and let's say we have uh, some function here, let's call it f of x. So this is just a function. There's nothing special about this function you could describe it in terms of f of x is equal to something. And now we want to create a three-dimensional shape out of it. The easiest way to do that, this is x and this is, this is f of x, we just take this and we revolve it around the x-axis. And so if you do that, you're going to end up with something that looks more or less like this. <clears throat> and, you know, the ends are going to be, you know, like that. And the end over here might look something like that. So you can see a three-dimensional shape. So it's kind of like a, a cup or something like that, right? It's got a circular top. It's got a circular bottom. And no matter where you cut it, it's got a circular cross-section. Of course, the circular cross-section, the radius of the, of the cross-section changes because f of x changes. But it's always a circle. And uh, so it, it creates a three-dimensional shape. And if you think about it, that's going to always be true. No matter how crazy I make f of x, f of x could go up and down, up and down. If I revolve it around the x-axis, I'm always going to have a cross-sectional area that's going to look like a circle because I'm revolving it like that, right? So let's write down a few things uh, about this. So we're going to, for the uh, washer method, we're going to revolve f of x about x-axis, all right? So at any x, the cross-sectional area at any x is just pi times r squared because no matter where we cut it, um, we're going to see a circle. But the radius, we know what the radius is. The radius, any point that we slice it is just f of x. Because if you think about it, and this is so critical, if I slice it right here, what is the radius of this circle? 